you know, we have been talking about all kinds of things. <laughs> and especially reality, I've got to go back to this reality thing. Because the Spirit just didn't let me leave it. He said, one of the things I, I need to tell my people is how to avoid false realities. How to avoid them. And avoiding false realities, first of all, we've got to understand that there is, you know, we know that there's a spiritual realm and a physical realm. Amen? And one of the things the enemy wants to m manipulate is your imagination. Because, see, your imagination is the window. And if he can manipulate your imagination, you can see things. In other words, he can put things in there that aren't supposed to be there. Amen? That's called perceptions. And so in this, and he does a very good job at it. So we know that there is a, a, a reality, not only physically, there's a reality mentally. Somebody understand? There's a reality emotionally. There's a reality imaginary. Spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally. These are all realities that the enemy likes to access to manipulate. So it becomes a reality to you. Why do you think people make decisions by how they feel? Because it becomes such a reality to them that they got to make that decision. This is how the enemy plays with humans. Amen? See, if, if we can tear away all false realities, we'd see a bunch of skeletons with a spirit. There was a, a flick, I forgot what it was called, and this dude found this pair of glasses, right? No, not that one. <laughs> not the one we show you here. It's another one, because they got a lot of foul language in this one. What was it called? They live. That's the name of it. They live. Don't watch it. You know, if you have to make sure you <laughs> mute a lot of it. And, and every time he puts glasses on, he, he'd walk around and he'd look at the store and the store would have a sign and, and then he'd put the glasses on and say, deception. <laughs> so it was promoting something. It was saying deception. He saw people that were just skeletons and they had a spirit. Some of them had a spirit and some of them had demons. He was able to see all of these things because he was able to tear away all false reality. And that's what God is trying to get with me and you in that area that we are reaching a higher level to tear away all false realities of, of the reality of how you feel, of, of what you think, of what you perceive. Amen? All of these false realities. Because we are in a time right now that many people, we know that the world has been taken under a false reality. Amen? So there's things that you and I got to avoid to prevent us from falling into a false reality reality. Amen? Because that re false reality becomes so real to people that they live it their whole life. Think about this. You and I were sent by God into this realm. Amen? We were born in a false reality. Oh, it feels real. The pain is real. The hurts are real. Everything's real. But it's still a false reality. And we became slaves to darkness. We became slaves to money. We became slaves to idols. We became slaves to uh, feelings. We became slaves to all kinds of things. It's just like the movie The Matrix. They were born in a false reality. Actually, they weren't even born. They were just connected by what? Thoughts, machinery. They became batteries, human batteries, to operate their kingdom of darkness and deception. That's still going on. Where do you think that movie came from? Hello. What do you think Hollywood's about? Hollywood was created to bring people into a false reality and a higher level. I mean, in fact, Hollywood means that's a witch's stick. Amen? So his purpose was to bring people into deception. So there's a lot of things. Look, at there's entertainment. Entertainment can bring people into deception. They can actually believe it. Look at how many people have killed themselves listening to certain music. Look how music affects people. What does it affect? It affects motion that brings them into a false reality. Amen? Look at education. There's no education. It's indoctrination. Look what they're trying to do today with kids in school. Heck, these kids are growing up, don't know what they are, male or female. 
because they're trying to bring them to another reality that is false and deceptive so they can control them. And you and I must avoid these areas of stepping into a false reality. When we were doing drugs and alcohol out there, that was bringing us into a false reality. It was a false hope. It was a lie. And people are dying in it, left and right, overdosing. Well, hell ain't a false reality. It's real. Amen? And God desires no one to be lost. So we are in such a time right now. So I want to just refresh us on some of the stuff and whatever the Spirit is releasing, we need to grab hold so we can avoid this. Amen? We don't want to go back. We want to go forward. And we don't want to step into these traps that the enemy is laying for each and every one of them. Look at uh, de demonic forces have been assigned to every single human being. That's why you must battle against them every single day. People become casualties of war because they don't know how to fight or they stop fighting. Amen? Because what's the battle? The battle is against the true reality and the false reality. Does everybody get it? See, the Word says you must work out your own salvation. You must battle. You can't battle for me. I can't battle for you. We can intercede for one another spiritually. But you still have a choice. Amen? Everyone still has a choice. And that's what the enemy wants to do, is he wants to influence our choices to accept a false reality or exchange a true reality for a false one. And he does it very well. Amen? Why do you think everybody's getting poked with these things? Because they've accepted a false reality, a fear. Everything has been fake. It's a lie. That's why when you and I are born again, a true reality came. You were awakened. Your eyes saw there was something different about us now. We got unplugged from the world. Some people are still partially plugged into the world. They've still got one foot in the world and one foot in the kingdom. And the devil owns the fence. Hello. Revelation chapter 12. Avoiding false realities. Because there's many false realities. Hallelujah. And verse 7 again. Glory. You know, as you think about it. Today is stupid, uh, what is it, a Super Bowl or Stupor Bowl? Whatever. Something like that. Listen, I, I love watch. I, 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 I used to love watching sports all the time, but ever started, ever day, the, since the day they started getting on their knees and causing all kinds of problems, I walked away from it. But today's what they call Super Bowl. I call it Stupid Bowl. And if you really think about it, if you tear away the, all the false reality of it, that's what you're seeing as a bunch of Nephilim genes fighting one another. Think about that. Does everybody understand that? That's what it is. It's like going back in the Roman days when the gladiators were going to fight one another. They just wear uniforms now. But that's what sports is all about, isn't it? It's entertainment, and they make big money to entertain people. And then they create false heroes. Because our hero is Jesus. Amen? So they keep people into a false reality, a temporary one. Again, I like playing sports and all kinds of things. But it can never become an idol. You must step out of that reality, that false reality, and realize what's really happening there. Amen? Hallelujah. Verse 7, let's speak it. What does it say? And war broke out in, in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail. Nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the, drag, the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who does what? He deceives the whole world. He, he was cast to the earth, 
and his angels were cast out with him. Again, the purpose of deception is to create a false reality in a person's thoughts, perceptions, and emotions, which are then that, what is that? It influences their heart of desire. It influences their what? Heart of their desire. Now they're desiring things that are being released from that false reality to expand that false reality. Is everybody okay? Do you get this? I hope so. Hallelujah. The world system is under false reality per pertaining uh, to ungodliness through lust of the eye. Now, lust of the eye is actually known as imagination also. Lust of the flesh, which is called passions and desires. Lust of the eye is imagination. Lust of the flesh is passion and desires. And the pride of life is what we call lust of self, which is rebellious towards God's ways. Amen? Jesus said, I am the way out. <laughs> I am the truth that sets you free. And I am the life in the reality of my kingdom. Does everybody get it? Way, truth, and life. James chapter 4. He says, I am the way out <laughs> of the false reality. Amen. I am the truth that sets you free. And I am the life and the true reality. James 4, verse 1. Let's speak it together. As, again, it says, where, where do wars and fights come from among you? Do not that come for your desires for pleasure that war in your members? Now, desires for pleasure. Desires are through the heart. Amen? Your heart is the core of all desire. So in this, we see that this is the enemy's ploy to get you to make an emotional choice. He says, you lust, and, um, you lust and do not have. You murder and covenant cannot obtain. You fight in war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. And when you ask, you do not receive because you ask it amiss that you may spend it on your what? Your now listen, God knows that those pleasures are what? They're from the false reality. That's why he withholds certain things. So when he withholds certain things, a person goes out and tries to get it themselves. He says he calls them what? Adulterers and adulteresses. Do you not know that what? Friendship with the world is enmity with God. What? Remember we talked about our pride of life. It will cause you to be what? A lover of the world and an enemy of God because you're in a rebellious state towards God's ways. Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealousy? Verse 6. But he gives more grace, which is more of his plan of escape. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud. What is he resisting? Their escape. Because they won't cooperate. But gives grace to what? The humble. The plan of escape. Therefore, submit to the ways of God, and you'll be able to resist the devil, and he will flee from you. That's simple. So the fight over reality is constant. There's the false reality and the true reality. And plus, there's other realities associated with your emotions, your imaginations. Amen? So the fight over reality is constant. Friendship with the world, world's ways of life, is a false reality. It says, and God rejects those that follow darkness, but will give a way out in true reality to those that become humble. Then he teaches them the truth so they can resist the traps and avoid entering the bondage of false reality. Remember, there are traps constantly. Every day, the enemy's trying to set a trap for me and you to step into the entranceway of a false reality. First John chapter 2. That's why we go through emotional attachments and severing these things. Amen? Because what are they promoting? They're promoting a false reality. And what's attached to these things? There's demonic influence in them. There's a spirit behind them. People are opening themselves to demons that don't even know it. 
1 John chapter 2, verse 15. Let's speak it. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in it. Is the love of the Father in a false reality or in a true reality? Amen. For all that is in the world, the loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. Why, all those three things are all false realities that keep you bound into the temporary realm and the true, total, complete false reality. But it's not true at all, is it? Okay. Verse 17, he says, the world is what? Passing away and the lust of it. The, the, the lust is what keeps us into that false reality. But it's passing away. But he who does the will of God abides forever. If you're doing the will of God, are you, have you escaped that reality? Yes, and entered the true reality. The true reality is known as the kingdom of God. That's why there's all kinds of false religions out there. People are trying to seek the truth, aren't they? They're trying to find the truth. And the enemy comes and puts things in front of them. All kinds of religions and whatever. God is the God of love. Amen? He's not going to kill you because you don't believe. <laughs> He's not going to threaten you. He's going to do everything he can to bring you into the kingdom. He's going to have mercy upon us over and over and over. And he's the only one that paid the price for us to enter the true reality and escape the false one. Everyone else is still, all those other religions are still a part of the false reality. Verse 18. He said, little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. Many Antichrists have come. They're false prophets and so forth. It says they went out from us, but they were not of us, for if they had been of us, they would have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. Why? Because they left the true reality into the false one. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. I have not written you because you don't know the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Now, we know that the devil is the father of all lies, isn't he? Amen. Who is a liar, but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ. He's an antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either, for he acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Therefore, let this abide in you, which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised us, eternal life, which is the what? True reality. Amen? These things I have written to you concerning those who what? Try to deceive you and pull you out of the true reality into the false one. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you should not need that anyone teach you this. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning things, and is true, and is not a lie, and just as it is taught you, you will abide in him. Again, the love of the Father is not in, false, is not in the false reality. Denial of Christ is a realm of false reality. Again, I expressed before, Hollywood is a major promoter of false realities. Amen? Many, many have been taken captive into that. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 12. I mean, we heard President Trump constantly say in the beginning, the media is fake. The media is fake. Why? Because it's false reality. They're lying. They're cheating. They're trying to bring people. I mean, how, how many years did people rely on the media and news? Many years. I mean, people would sit and watch TV all day long listening to the news. Not realizing it was bringing them into a false rea reality. And they became fearful or whatever and emotionally affected and this and that. And, and dumb and everything else. They dumbed them down. That's what schools try to do now to our kids, dumb them down. That's why God is raising up true teachers to ex ex exchange them out. If you remember at one time when you went to school, 
you, everybody said the pr Pledge of Allegiance and did the Our Father or something. Amen? Now if you say that, they, you know, they throw you out. Hebrews 12, verse 14. What does it say? Pursue peace with who? All people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble, and by this many become what? Defiled. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person like Esau, who for one morsel of food sold his what? Birthright. For you know that afterward when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was what? Rejected. For he found no place for repentance. Though he sought it diligently with what? Tears. There's a lot of crying, but no repenting. Amen? That means turn away. Bitterness is followed by something. It's called unforgiveness. Bitterness is always followed by unforgiveness, which is the entrance to the false reality of bondage, fear, and torment. The end result is the exchange of true reality for a false reality, leading to a place of open doors for the enemy to come to steal, kill, and destroy. Again, I want to say, bitterness always follows unforgiveness. Amen? A person can't forgive. Holds bitterness. It always brings a person into a false reality. Unforgiveness is an area of emotional attack. Amen? There's bitterness there. And Matthew 18. Matthew 18. 21, please. Avoiding false realities. Everybody there? Anybody there? Okay, cool. Let's speak. It. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to what? Seventy times seven. That means every time. Every time. Say, everyone say every time. Why? Because you don't want to fall into unforgiveness and then what? Bitterness. Open a door to a false reality. And what is a false reality? Look at Before you even hit that, you got false perceptions of everything. Amen? Anybody ever come to tell you about someone? And there's a perception about that someone until you met that someone? And you may have found out that it was true, but not all of it. Amen? There was always something that was missing from it. That's how the enemy operates in James chapter 3. Avoiding. We must avoid it. Quick to forgive. Childlike. James 3.13. Let's speak it. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by what? Good conduct that his works are done in meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. In other words, don't reject the truth. Amen? But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from what? Above, but is what? Earthly, sensual, and demonic. See, this is where the enemy loves to step in. Because wisdom tells you what to do. Now there's the influence of the enemy telling you what to do instead of waiting on God to tell you what to do. Because why? There's a false perception and a false reality. Now it's exposing and promoting. It's exposing and promoting. It's actually exposing you and promoting the false reality. In verse 16, let's speak it. For where envy and self-seeking exists, 
confusion and every evil thing are there. Whoa. Confusion is the hallway entrance to false reality. It's maintained by bitter envy, self-seeking, vengeance, and demonic wisdom, which is the keeper of false reality. Demonic wisdom is the keeper of false reality. Amen? Again, he says here, but the wisdom for where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. So when a person falls into confusion, they're entering the hallway between and leave, leaving the true reality and entering the false reality. It's an entranceway. It's like a hallway. I'm sharing these things because this is what the vision came to me. Hallelujah. Again, these are the things that we must avoid. We must avoid these traps. He says, verse 17, but the wisdom that's from above is first what? Pure. Everyone say pure. pure. Then peaceable, not tormenting, not confusion. Gentle. Everyone say gentle. Good, uh, gentle, willing to what? Yield, submit. Full of what? Mercy. And see, when you call out for mercy, you're asking God to give you another opportunity. Amen? When you and I call out on Jesus, that was called mercy. When he answers you with mercy, he sends grace. Grace is the plan of escape. Amen? Willing to you, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Cool. Revelation 13. <clears throat> Avoiding false realities. There will be more demonic activity released on the planet. And that the purpose is to bring and prepare as many humanites as possible into a false reality. Think about all the people that are going to receive the mark at some time. Amen? I mean, there are so many people who received the marker. But how many more people are going to receive the mark believing it's the, a, a, a true reality that that's their only way out? In Revelation 13, 11, let's speak it. Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb and a, a spoke like a dragon. And he exercises all authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. He performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of man. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. He causes all both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has that mark or the name of the beast or the number of the beast. Where is the wisdom? Let him who has understanding and calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of, the, of a man, and his number is 666. Again, this brings, he's talking about bringing the image of the false reality into an existence. Amen? Through thoughts, through lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride, fear, lies, deceit, releasing the mark of acceptance. 
It's called the mark of acceptance. Why? Because the people are now accepting that mark because they believe in that false reality. Many receive markers of the false plagues, many believers and non-believers, through deception, lies, and fear. This will escalate until divine intervention of truth is accepted by the majority of human humanity to stand against these lies. And Mark 13. Oh, I'm sorry, Matthew 13. Hallelujah. What a time to be alive, but what a time to know the truth. What a time to take our kids out of school. <laughs> Until this calamity passes by, amen. Matthew 13, verse 44. Let's speak it again. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in the field which a man found and hid. And for joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has to buy that field. <clears throat> again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls who when he had found one pearl of great price went and saw, sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the, he's speaking about the true reality of the kingdom, saying, look, at, I'm willing to get rid of everything that's associated with this false reality that I may maintain this. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet that was cast into the sea and gathered some of every kind, which when it was full, they drew to shore. And they sat down and gathered the good into the vessels and threw the bad away. So it will be at the end of the age, the angels will come forth, separate the wicked from among the just, and cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Wow. And again, we see the kingdom of heaven as a true reality. The battles of the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of heaven are constant. The enemy has convinced humanity that the battle is political, governmental, foreign, or personal, avoiding that it is a spiritual battle with the physical effects. If people were truly fighting in the spirit, there wouldn't be so much. This battle over reality is done by influences of the mind, emotions, and desires. The elite, arrogant, extremely wealthy, that are antichrist, amen, have been groomed for this moment. When you begin to follow back on some of them, I'm going to use one as an example, like Bill Gates. If you realize, because this is what he's into, Bill Gates' his father it was the president of Planned Parenthood. Hello. Which murders the unborn. Amen. His grandfather was one of the major board members of the, of the uh, Eugenics Society. That's his grandfather. Now, eugenics is a set of beliefs and practices which aims to influence human genetics by excluding people and groups judged by it. It's inferior. He calls them inferior people. What's he trying to do? Depopulate. So they're going to try to do it through genetics. So why not give them a booster shot? Hello. And change their genetics. And then get 5G, which affects it. Does everybody understand what's happening? I mean, reality is here. <laughs> that is true reality, what's happening. But people want to put blinders on and ignore it. I've had people I want to tell the truth about. They said, I don't want to hear it anymore. I don't want to hear it. And I tell them, do you think not knowing is going to change anything? It's not. Hello. So again, this eugenics is set to change genetics so that it's excluding people and groups 
they, they judge themselves to be inferior. Amen? Just like Lucifer, uh, attempting to still create his own race. Even Hitler tried it. Amen? It's still going on. It's not changed. Many others that support the Antichrist false reality realm will end up in hell. The true reality of God's judgment. They will not escape. In James chapter 1. Oh, happy days. We should be joyful <laughs> and so thankful to know truth. Amen? To know the truth. James 1, 21. Let's speak it. Therefore lay aside a what? Filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to what? Save your souls. In other words, prevent you from stepping into a false reality. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hero of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it. It is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This one will be blessed in what he does. If any of you think uh, he's religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, who visit orphans and widows in their trouble and keep oneself unspotted from the worldly ways. Amen. Be doers and not just hearers, deceiving yourself into a false realm, a false reality. In Psalm 119, Can anxiousness put you into a false reality? Amen. Remember, the devil comes to push, the spirit comes to lead. Verse 1, Psalm 119. Let's speak it. Everybody there? Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with a whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. You have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep your statutes. Then I would not be ashamed when I look into all your commandments. I will praise you with the uprightness of heart. When I learn your righteous judgments, I will keep your statutes. And do not forsake me utterly. How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word. That's how you cleanse his, your way. With my whole heart I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I have declared all the judgments of your mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies as much as all in riches. I will meditate on your precepts and contemplate your ways. I will delight myself in your statutes and I will not forget your word. Again, avoiding these temptations that defile the truth, the way, and the life of Christ Jesus that cause open doors to false realities. By renewing and refreshing and reconnecting yourself to the words of the presence of God and the anointing, we must be quick to repent and forgive. Amen? Everybody's going to be offended some way or another, no matter what comes across your path. You're going to be angry. Something's going to happen. Welcome to the earth. Amen? Hallelujah. It's what you do with it. Romans 12. Heck, I'm my worst enemy. I get more angry at myself than I do anything else. Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a what? Living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your responsibility or reasonable service. Here it is. Are you ready for number two? 
what? Do not be conformed to this world. Why? Because it's a false reality. But be transformed by the renewing of your thoughts that you may prove that which is that good and perfect and acceptable will of God. Amen? Go to verse 9 while we're here. Let love be without what? Hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. Yes, that's what we need to do. Um, be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love and honor, giving preference to one another, not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints, giving to hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Hello. In your opinions. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peacefully with all men. He said, if possible. Amen. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves. But do not what? Avenge yourselves, but rather give play, no, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, "Vengeance is mine; I will repay." Says the Lord, Lord God. God's going to do it. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals on a fire on his head. See, so you just be nice to your enemies. God's going to take care of it. Amen. Do not overcome. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with what? Good. Hallelujah. Philippians 2. Again, this renewing and refreshing is important because the word says, as a man thinks, so he is. Hallelujah. Remember, that's a whole other reality, how people think, what they perceive, their imaginations, their emotions. Hallelujah. In verse 12, please. And then one more, verse, one more scripture. Philippians 2, 12. Everybody there? Praise God. Let's speak it. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not in my presence only, but how much more in, in my absence, work out your own salvation with what? Fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Do all things without complaining and disputing, that you may become blameless and harmless children of God, without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life, so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Work out your own salvation, not anyone else's. Amen. And I'm going to close the second Corinthians chapter four. Be alert, be continuous, for your adversary seeks whom he can devour and deceive. He can't he can't devour you unless he deceives you first, right? Verse 16. Let's speak it. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being what? Renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but a moment, is working for us far more exceeding an eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are what? Eternal. That's the eternal realm reality. So listen, stuff's going to happen. Amen? It's what you do with it. Again, we must be quick to forgive, repent, bless. Amen? We must be quick to those things so that nothing else can come and affect us. 
everybody's going to go through something. You'll be offended. You'll be rejected. You'll be whatever. Afflicted. You'll be afflicted. Welcome to the day of afflictions. <laughs> You're not going to get things that you want. Hello. Or those high expectations which just dropped you off a cliff because it didn't come. High expectations bring big falls sometimes. Our expectation is in God. Amen? Being led by the Spirit of God, waiting on the Lord, allowing Him to build the house and not us. Cast your opinions out upon Him. Amen? <laughs> yes. Cast all of them. Cast your grumbling and complaining and go, go spew on people. Amen? If you got a problem with a brother or sister, go to them. Don't come to the office until it's time. Go to them. Why? The lack of communication between individuals is usually cause a lot of assumption. Amen? It causes problems. Even in marriages. We counsel in marriages. And most of the time, it's just the lack of communication and being open with one another. You know? When something happens, they hold it. And they're waiting for something to happen. They go to God and God says, go talk to them. <laughs> no, I want to just talk to you. And then it builds more and more and a false reality starts coming and false perceptions and all kinds of stuff. And then chaos. Amen? Listen, we're to protect one another from these things. God wants us to be like-minded and like-hearted. Amen? We should assist one another in protecting one another in that area. The Bible says in a multitude of counsel, there's what? Safety and wisdom. Safety and wisdom. Praise God. Lord, we are honored and blessed. We thank you so much for your truth that sets us free. And those who practice it will be free. Lord, we just take this opportunity right now, and if anyone here in this room holds anything towards anyone, Lord, we forgive them and bless them. We ask that you set them free from any bondages and fears. Set them free, Lord, from any holds of bitterness, envy, or strife, torment. Heal your people, Lord, emotionally, mentally, physically, so that they may walk in the Spirit and be set free from false realities and false presumptions and false desires. That they may not be held by emotional distress, but they walk in peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit so that the world can see you and not us in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. Prepare your heart for communion. You can bring any tithes and offerings up. Is it